Hello and welcome to lecture 9 of module 2 of this course on accelerator physics. In today's lecture, we will continue with the transverse dynamics of beams. In the last lecture, we learned about the transverse dynamics. So, the beam in general tends to diverge in the direction, transverse to the direction of motion due to various reasons. So, it could be due to the inherent divergence of the beam, it could be due to the uh, defocusing RF forces, the RF fields or it could also be due to space charge effects which is the Coulombic repulsion due to the same charge uh, particles in the beam. So due to these reasons the beam tends to diverge in the transverse direction. So the beam has to be focused and brought back to the axis. Beam can be focused in the transverse direction using a magnetic or electric quadrupole. So we learnt about the focusing uh, of the magnetic as well as electric quadrupole in the last lecture and we saw that a quadrupole focuses in one direction but defocuses in the other direction. So you need to use a combination of two quadrupoles in order to focus in both the directions. So a combination of two quadrupoles of opposite polarities can be used to focus the beam in both the transverse directions. We also saw how a solenoid focuses and we saw that the solenoids focus the beam in both the transverse directions. We also derived the transfer matrices from the equation of motion for the quadrupole, both the focusing quadrupole and the defocusing quadrupole and for the drift space. And uh, in this way, we can derive the transfer matrices for all the elements in a uh, accelerator system whether it's an RF gap or a dipole magnet or any other system. So transfer matrices for all elements can be derived using the equation of motion. By using the matrix multiplication method using transfer matrices of the various elements can be used to find the final coordinates at the end of the elements if we know the initial coordinates of the particles and the elements of the transfer matrices. So we saw that if we know the transfer matrix, matrix and if we know the initial coordinates of the particles, we can find out the final coordinates of the particles. So various focusing lattices are used for focusing in a linear accelerator. So for example, in a drift tube linac, you can see the picture of a drift tube linac here. So these are the drift tubes. In between the drift tubes, uh, there is this gap where the RF field is applied. So the beam gets accelerated in the gap and when it enters inside the drift tube, since fields cannot penetrate inside the drift tube, it does not experience any accelerating field. Inside these drift tubes, quadrupoles are used for focusing the beam. So there are quadrupoles inside this drift tubes. They are used for focusing the beam in the transverse direction. So you have to use a combination of two quadrupoles so that you can focus in both the directions. So let's say there is a focusing quadrupole here. This will be a defocusing, there will be another focusing or a de and then a defocusing quadrupole. So different types of focusing lattices are used for focusing. This is known as a photo lattice. So in a photo lattice there is a focusing quadrupole followed by, so this is a drift space followed by a defocusing quadrupole then a focusing defocusing and so on. And remember if this is focusing, this quadrupole is focusing in the x direction, for the y direction it will be defocusing. But the overall combination of such uh, quadrupoles will always produce focusing in both the directions. We can also use a fofododo type of uh, lattice for focusing, where in one, uh, one a drift tube we have a focusing uh, quadrupole, in the next one again a focusing quadrupole and then followed by two defocusing quadrupoles and so on. A 4-4-4 do, do, do type of lattice can also be used for focusing. So there are, you can arrange the uh, quadrupoles in various combinations as long as you have both a focusing quadrupole and a defocusing quadrupole and the net result will then be focusing in both the directions. <clears throat> uh, FT type of uh, quadrupole focusing can be used or is generally used between cryo modules containing 5 cell or multi cell elliptical cavities. So here for example these uh, shown here is this is a 5 cell elliptical cavity. So there are 3 uh, groups of 5 cell 
uh, elliptical cavities they are inside a cryostat so we have uh, already learnt about uh, this type of uh, cavities they are used for acceleration so this is inside a cryostat this is a superconducting cavity in between two cryostats we have uh, warm quadrupoles or normal conducting quadrupoles that are used for focusing so again they are arranged in an fd type of manner so this type of lattice can be used for focusing in uh, between cryo modules containing multi cell cavities then solenoid based focusing lattice in a cryo module with single spoke resonator cavities again single spoke resonator cavities are superconducting cavities and uh, so these are the uh, cavities the ssr cavities and uh, this is the cryo module so they are placed inside the cryo module and in between the uh, ssr cavities solenoid magnets are used for focusing the beam so everywhere we have periodic focusing the focusing has to be throughout and the focusing is periodic so uh, periodic focusing lattices are used for focusing the beam in the linear so in the last lecture we derived the equation of motion for the quadrupole so this is for the focusing quadrupole and this is for the defocusing quadrupole here k stands for k is a constant and it is qg by mvz where q is the charge m is the mass vz is the velocity in the z direction and g is the gradient of the quadrupole used so we can solve this to find out the trajectory of the charge particle under the influence of this type of quadrupole similarly for a drift space we can write the equation of motion as x double prime is 0 and y double prime is 0 because here now there is no focusing or defocusing force k is equal to 0 so this is the equation of motion for a particle inside a drift space a field free region similarly for a dipole magnet we can write the equation so a dipole magnet is a magnet with two poles it bends the beam in one direction so here rho is the radius of curvature of the bend so in the x direction you can write the equation as x double prime plus 1 by rho square x square is 0 and in the y direction there is no force so y double prime is equal to 0 so in general we can write the equation of motion of the particles inside any system as x double prime plus k x x is 0 and y double prime plus k y y is 0 in the x and y directions now here depending on what is the element whether it's a quadrupole magnet a focusing quadrupole or a defocusing quadrupole or it's a drift space or an rf gap the uh, kx will take values let us consider for example a fodo lattice so here we have a focusing quadrupole a drift space a defocusing quadrupole and a drift space again followed by the same thing so this is the length of the period denoted by l so we are here we notice that the period repeats itself after l so kx is periodic in l so we can write kx s is equal to kx s plus l and similarly for y s is the longitudinal coordinates uh, which is also z so in general we can write the equation of motion for a periodic system as x double prime plus ks x is equal to 0 with ks is equal to ks plus l so here k is now a function of s so depending on where the charge particle it is whether it's inside a quadrupole or inside a drift spew drift space or a defocusing quadrupole k will take values so this equation is known as the hills equation the equation of motion of a single particle also known as the hills equation is similar to that of the equation of a harmonic oscillator so the harmonic os oscillator is x double prime plus kx is equal to 0 the only difference here is that here for the simple harmonic oscillator k is constant so uh, we can write the solution for the simple harmonic oscillator x is a cos root k s so here the amplitude a is constant so you can see here the amplitude is a constant also the phase advance which is under root k s is a constant the motion of uh, the particle under the influence of a constant force like this in phase space is an ellipse so you can find out x prime and from here you can so 
uh, you can eliminate cos and sin so you get an equation of an ellipse so the equation in phase space is that of an ellipse so from this we can try to understand the solution of the hills equation so let's solve the hills equation so this is the hills equation and for a periodic system we can write it as ks is equal to ks plus l where l is the length of the period now from Floquet's theorem which states that the amplitude and phase functions satisfy a periodic boundary condition similar to that of ks the solution can be written as let's say under root epsilon beta s cos phi s plus phi zero so here we notice that the amplitude is now a function of s for the simple harmonic oscillator the amplitude was constant here the amplitude is a function of s because k is a function of s so here the epsilon is a constant and beta s is a periodic function given by the focusing properties of the lattice that is quadrupole so beta s has the same periodicity as that of the lattice so we can write beta s is equal to beta s plus l now we can differentiate this with respect to s so we have two terms here with which depend on s one is the beta s the other one is cos phi s so in uh, first case we can keep the cos phi s term constant and differentiate with respect to beta and in the second term, uh, case we can keep the beta term constant and differentiate with respect to phi so we get this differentiating this again so now we get six terms uh, differentiating this with respect to s and now we can substitute the value of x double prime in equation 1 that is the Hill's equation so Hill's equation is x double prime plus k s x is equal to 0 so if we substitute this here this is what we get so we see that there are some terms with cos and some terms with sin now we can equate the coefficients of sin and cos separately to 0 so doing that we are uh, we are left with two equations so we have two equations now in terms of beta and phi so let's see the first equation so here we have an expression in terms of beta and phi let's take under root epsilon beta constant so we are left with this expression and from this expression we can write beta prime phi prime plus beta phi double prime is equal to zero this can be rearranged as beta prime by beta is equal to minus phi double prime by phi prime. So this can be solved and uh, we get beta phi prime is equal to constant and this constant can be taken to be 1. So from here we can write phi is equal to integra integrating over the whole period from 0 to L ds beta s plus phi 0 which is some constant so here phi s is called the phase advance between 0 and L. So 0 and L, L here is the period, it is one period of the lattice. Now here we define uh, two, uh, two functions alpha and gamma in terms of beta. So alpha is simply minus beta prime by 2. So we take the derivative of beta and with a minus sign divided by 2 so this is the definition of alpha and gamma is 1 plus alpha square by beta now since beta is periodic in s alpha and gamma will also be periodic in s so alpha beta gamma are all periodic in s now let's take the second term the second equation here and equating it to 0 so we get this again taking under root epsilon beta common here so we are left with this expression which goes to 0 so this is an expression in terms of beta k and phi so here beta is the amplitude function k is the focusing parameter or the force constant and phi is the phase advance so this expression can be written in this form here it can be rearranged to write in terms of beta and gamma in this form here and in terms of alpha beta gamma in this form here so here alpha beta and gamma these are called the twist parameters and they depend on s 
Now let's see the phase space for the particle in the case of uh, the particle satisfying the Hill's equation. So the Hill's equation again is x double prime plus k s x is equal to 0. The solution is of the form under root epsilon beta cos phi. So from here we can write cos phi as equal to epsilon by under root uh, x upon under root epsilon beta. Now taking the derivative with respect to s, so we have x prime is equal to, we get a cos term and a sine term. Now here beta prime, we can write it as minus 2 alpha and phi prime can be written as from here, phi prime can be written as 1 by beta. So substituting the values of beta prime and phi prime here, we get this expression for x prime. And from here, we can find out the value of sine phi. So now we have an expression for cos phi and an expression for sine phi. And we know that sine square phi plus cos square phi is equal to 1. So substituting these values, we get this expression. Simplifying this expression, so we get uh, this equation here. And then simplifying it even further, we get... 1 plus alpha square x square plus 2 alpha beta x x prime plus beta square x prime square is equal to epsilon beta. Now we have defined gamma as 1 plus alpha square by beta. So we can put 1 plus alpha square is equal to beta gamma in this expression here. So we put this here and we simplify this and we get this equation so in terms of x and x prime okay so we see that the uh, we see that the motion in phase space is again an ellipse so here epsilon is the constant of motion it does not depend on s but alpha beta and gamma depend on s so here the ellipse varies with s so the motion in phase space is still an ellipse for the particle satisfying the Hill's equation and but here the alpha, beta, gamma they depend on s or the position. So here we have used alpha is equal to minus beta prime by 2 and gamma is equal to 1 plus alpha square by beta. So this is the general equation of an ellipse. All the particles in the beam will satisfy this equation because all the particles in the beam will experience the force, same force. So they, uh, they will all satisfy this equation. For alpha is equal to 0, so in this if we put alpha as equal to 0, this term goes to 0 and we get an upright ellipse. So upright ellipse means we will get an ellipse which is like this or an ellipse which is like this. So, for the case of Hill's equation, we can see that here, uh, since k is now a function of s and it is periodic in s, so the motion will be, it will execute, the particle will execute pseudo-harmonic oscillations, which you can see here. So, the solution is now of the form of a under root beta s cos phi s, so the amplitude also depends on s in this case here. The amplitude is modulated with s. So beta is the uh, beta is a periodic envelope function. So this is denoted by beta. So here this is a under root beta. And uh, if you calculate the phase advance, which we have already done, so we found the phase advance to be equal to integration over 0 to s ds by beta s and this is now non-uniform. So, and the phase space motion of the particles, if you, uh, if you uh, uh, calculate, you see that you get an ellipse, but now the coefficient of the terms, the x square, x, x prime, x prime square terms, this is now these are now functions of s. So it's an ellipse, but now the ellipse is changing with s. Okay, so we can now compare the simple harmonic oscillator versus the Hill's equation. In a simple harmonic oscillator, k is a constant. Here k is a function of s and uh, it is periodic in, uh, periodic in s. Here the solution is a cos root k s. Here the solution is a under root beta s cos phi s. So here we see that the amplitude is a function of s. So 
in this case for the simple harmonic oscillator the amplitude is constant whereas in this case the amplitude is modulated with s so amplitude is a under root beta s and beta s is a periodic envelope function so it has the same periodicity as that of the lattice the phase advance for the simple harmonic oscillator is under root ks which is a constant whereas the phase advance here is integral 0 to s ds by beta s which is non uniform the phase space is an ellipse for both the cases for the simple harmonic oscillator and for the hill equation but here the uh, ellipse is changing with s because the twist parameters alpha beta and gamma are functions of s now in real life the beam consists of many charged particles having coordinates xi and xi prime where i stands for the ith particle so general equation of the ellipse in x x prime trace space is this so all particles will satisfy this equation all particles in the beam all the i particles in the beam they will satisfy the this equation so here beta gamma minus alpha square is equal to 1 so each particle in the beam will satisfy this equation at a given location s in trace space x x prime each particle will lie on an ellipse defined by the twist parameters alpha beta and gamma so each particle you can see here will lie on the ellipse so for all these ellipses the twist parameters alpha beta gamma are the same the alpha beta gamma tell you about the shape and orientation of the ellipse so for all these particles since all the particles satisfy this equation so for all these particles the twist parameters are the same so ellipses of all the particles are concentric the area of each ellipse for each of this case the area of each ellipse depends on the value of the constant of motion which is epsilon i for that particle so what is different for each particle it is the constant of motion epsilon so the outermost ellipse if you see this is the outermost ellipse it defines the maximum beam size and the beam divergence so what is the maximum beam size this is the outermost ellipse this green ellipse is the outermost ellipse and this is the maximum x if you see this uh, this location here this is the maximum x so this defines the maximum beam size and this is the maximum x prime so this defines the maximum beam divergence so let us now consider the outermost uh, ellipse so the twist parameters are the same for all the uh, ellipse all the ellipses only the uh, the epsilon the constant of motion is uh, different for different particles so beam phase space contours in a linear they have approximate shape of an ellipse which we have just derived and seen so general equation of the beam ellipse is given by gamma x square plus 2 alpha x x prime plus beta x prime square is equal to epsilon so here alpha beta gamma are the twist parameters and they are related by gamma is equal to 1 plus alpha square by beta the motion of the particles is along curves of constant hamiltonian epsilon and uh, so here you can see that this is the outermost ellipse and uh, this defines the maximum beam half width so xm is equal to under root beta epsilon so this is equal to under root beta epsilon and this is the beam maximum beam half width similarly this defines the maximum beam divergence and this is equal to under root gamma epsilon this is the beam half divergence now emittance of the beam is defined as the area of the outermost ellipse so this is the outermost ellipse you take the area of this ellipse and divided by by this is known as the beam emittance so beam emittance is a figure of merit of the beam and uh, its units are in um, meter and so meter and radians so here epsilon corresponds to the constant of motion of the outermost particle now liouville's theorem states that if x is the transverse position 
and px is the transverse momentum or any particle then for a group of particles integral px dx is equal to a constant so by liouville's theorem the integral of px dx is equal to constant now what is px px is the momentum in the x direction so we can write it as mass into vx now mass is in relativistic mechanics defined as gamma into the rest mass where gamma this is not the twist parameter it is the relativistic gamma and uh, vx can be written as dx by dt now here again dx by dt can be written as dx by dz into dz by dt so we can write this as gamma mo dx by dz is simply x prime and this is vz so we have beta gamma mo c x prime vz can be written as beta c so uh, now substituting the value of px in this expression integral px dx is equal to 0 so we can take m o c beta gamma outside the integral and inside the integral we are left with x prime dx so this is a constant this whole thing is a constant by liouville's theorem now integral x prime dx is simply the emittance because it is the area a, uh, area of the uh, ellipse so an integral x prime dx is the emittance of the beam so from here now this says that this expression says Liouville's theorem says that this is a constant which can be absorbed in the constant here so beta gamma into emittance so beta gamma into the emittance is equal to a constant now if there is acceleration beta and gamma are the relativistic parameters so if there is acceleration beta and gamma will change so beta will increase gamma will increase so in other words uh, uh, this parameter will increase so this parameter multiplied by the emittance is a constant so in the presence of uh, acceleration emittance is not a constant what is constant is emittance multiplied by beta gamma so emittance multiplied by beta gamma is known as normalized emittance and this normalized emittance remains constant during acceleration if there is no acceleration then the emittance is also a constant but during acceleration the emittance is no longer constant the normalized emittance which is beta gamma multiplied by the emittance that is a constant so beta gamma epsilon is the normalized emittance and it is conserved even during longitudinal acceleration the emittance epsilon is conserved if there is no longitudinal acceleration